Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. And inside of today's video, we're going to be ranking all brawlers in the game right now within the game mode ranked. So this is just with the modifiers. This is with, uh, of course, the concise map pool. And I'm not going to include gameplay here because I'm quite short on time. Although I have really gone into depth on the tier list itself. Again, I'm just short on time because I'm out um, tomorrow when I'm recording this. Anyways, let's jump into it then. Make sure you subscribe if you're not already as well because I give you all the best info on ranked. So just giving you guys like the best tips, modes, situations where these brawlers are good. So I'm going to be starting off with 8-bit. So 8-bit, I think it's falling down a little bit. He used to be really strong on like quick fire and big friend. The modifiers don't really help him out too much. But he's a good option in gem grab and heist. I think he's really underrated to be fair. I think B-tier is pretty fair. Next, we have Amber. So, I think Amber's a really good pick. I think close to S tier, but I think just... I don't know. She's not, like, broken, but she's just a, such a solid option everywhere. And people just don't ban her, like, ban her enough or don't even play her enough. Super underrated, as I said. Ash, I think he belongs in a C tier. He's actually underrated on barbed ammo. But except for that, there's just too many counters, too many tanks that have hype charges that just des delete him. And I've hardly seen any good Ashes. Like, a really good Ash player can dominate. But C tier is pretty fair for him. Like, he's good in the right hands. Next up, we have Barley. So, I kind of want to put him in the F tier, if I'm honest. Like, I've just never seen a Barley. Like, a good Barley can play good and do a lot of things on the map. But at the same time, I don't know. There's better throws out there. Gets countered too easily. Doesn't deal enough damage. Uh, yeah, just gets overrun by everything. He's just so easy to counter. So, I think D or F tier. I'm going to be harsh, though. F tier for ranks because I just don't ever see a Barley. Next up, we have B. So, again, I don't really see B too much. Even though she's supposed to counter tanks, it takes her too long to cycle to her super. She's just too easy to rush. I think C tier is definitely fair. Another easy one, Bell S tier. Absolutely one of the best rulers in the game with a recent hypercharge. Super consistent, never banned out, and she's just good in every single modifier. Next up, we have BB. So I think BB actually is a really strong brawler. She's got a lot of good maps, but at the same time, there's too many open maps for her, unfortunately. So I feel like B tier is fair. Her hypercharge is pretty strong overall. But I still feel like it's just too easy to counter BB. Next, we have Bonnie. So, again, another underrated brawler. I'm not seeing many of my randoms picking Bonnie too much. Maybe because they haven't maxed her out because she's not that flashy. But ever since she got the buff to her supercharge rate, going from four hits to three hits, she's becoming a much better brawler. Next, we have Bo. So, again, he's fallen down the rankings a little bit. I don't think he's really that great outside of maybe like Pinball Dreams and a few hot zone maps. But, yeah, he's too easy to counter by the good players. But lower down in ELO, I think he's a very good brawler in ranked. The same goes with Brock as well, I think. At the higher ELO, he's a little bit easier to predict and counter with other snipers. But lower ELO, he can definitely be, like, even towards S is so easy to dominate with Brock at lower tiers. Next up, we have uh, Bull. I think Bull actually is D tier. His hype charge is pretty good. But it's the same problem with Bull. Again, ever since Hype Charge got nerfed itself, it's really affected Bull. He's only good in Heist and still then in Heist. I'd rather go a different type of tank that has a Hype Charge like Primo, Buzz, or BB. So, yeah, I think he's really fallen down. Outside of his Hype Charge, too easy to counter. Next, we have Buzz. So, I feel like Buzz is kind of like B slash C tier. I think it's his Hype Charge allows him to be B tier. But in reality, I think C tier probably would be more fair. But at least he has a hype charge. He's really strong in heist and a good counter to some brawlers. I don't see him drafted too much, but maybe because he's a high skill ceiling than some of the other hype charges. Next, we have Byron. So I'm going to be biased here, but I think A tier, absolutely minimum A tier. He's so strong. My win rate with Byron is astronomical. And I'm just unsure why people aren't playing him enough, like more. Like I'm the only one that plays him apparently, but he's so strong. Again, it's going to be a, a um, unpopular opinion, but he's got to be there. Next, we have Cole. So, Sick Beats. He's one of the best brawlers in Sick Beats. He's got a recent damage buff. And he's a good late pick. He's a high skill cap brawler. So, it's hard to make pop-off moments with him. But when you can, he will dominate. Definitely really good. Next, we have Colette. So, she's a really strong brawler. But it takes the right matchup. I think if you don't face off against tanks or, you know, brawlers like Cole or any high HP brawler like Meg then you're going to struggle with Colette. So only really pick her in heist and then as a counter pick. But B is still pretty solid overall. Good hype charge. Next, we have Colt. So I think Colt is pretty fair in a B tier, mainly because he's insane in heist, just like Colette. And then everywhere else, he's just kind of, he's good. Like a good Colt can do a lot, like a lot of damage. But at the same time, it takes the right player to make good plays with him. So I think A slash B tier would be fair for him. Next up, we have Crow. I would honestly put him towards the D tier. I, I just don't think... Crow is that good. I might be very harsh. I'm being extremely harsh here. He could easily be C tier, but because of the fall off, I'm not seeing him drafted anywhere. I, I don't know. I I don't think I've ever seen a Crow make a pop-off play in this ranked meta. So for me, 
I'm going to have to put him in a D tier. Again, might be a little bit biased. Next up, we have Daryl. So I really want to put Daryl in the F tier right now and ranked. I just don't think any modify helps him out. He's not good in any single scenario. It just gets outclassed far too often. Not even a good counter pick anymore. So I think F tier is pretty fair for him. Next, we have Edgar. So I know you guys are going to be heated in the comments, but... B tier is good. B tier means that they're a strong brawler. They have their good game modes, a couple of good game modes. They're just countered sometimes too easily. Like Edgar, good players counter him easily. He's really good in sick beats though. And he's good in like heist. He's one of the best brawlers in heist. One of the best counter pick brawlers in hot zone, for example. But still, I know I had to counter him too easily. Edgar never causes me a problem in ranked. Next up, we have M. So again, another consistent brawler. I think B tier would be fair. I think actually C tier is more fair just because I don't see her play too often. I think the map pool really does affect her because the limits for ra range, you know, she can't get close. So, I mean, good maps. So she is still pretty all right. Next up, we have Eve. So I'm going to put Eve in the A tier mainly because on her strong maps, so a lot of maps with water. I mean, she's not going to be like a dominant pick, but she's just so solid against everything. Really hard to counter herself. I just think A tier is pretty fair. You know, bridge too far. You think of out in the open. And Eve's one of the best picks in that scenario. Next up, we have Fang. So Fang has drastically fallen off. Again, if you're lower in ELO, if you're mythic kind of tier, Fang will pop off still because people like to clump up a lot and don't know the best counters. But I think Fang, C tier, I think that's pretty fair. Don't really see him too much in Masters ranked at all. Next up, we have Frank. He's in the F tier. Uh, big friend was removed. He's terrible. Move on to the next brawler. I think Gale, again, has kind of fallen off a bit. I think he is good in some scenarios or like split, center stage. He has his moments. He's good counter to some tanks and some hypercharged brawlers, but I think he's slowly drifting down the meta again. Next up, we have Gene. So I think Gene is a very, very good brawler in ranks right now. I think, again, borderline S tier. So he's not going to be that carry brawler, but at the same time, He's really good in time detonation, really good in knockout, really good in bouncy, really good in gem grab. He's just solid across the board. The damage buff definitely helped him out a lot. Next up, we have Griff. So I think Griff is a good brawler. I think B tier would be fair to him. Again, I feel like he is outclassed most of the time. But, you know, if you're playing hot zone or some other scenarios where you need a good wall break, Griff is a good option. Does a lot of damage. Next, we have Grom. So I feel like Grom could easily be like a B tier brawler. But at the same time, I don't really use him too much. I think... Ah, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. I think C tier would be fair. I think easily it could be B tier, but I think a lot of the times he's only really picked as like a late throw pick because if you pick Grom early on in the draft, good players know how to juke Grom and get aggressive and counter him easily. Next up, we have Jackie. So Jackie's fallen off a lot since the hypercharge nerf. Literally, you could just go brain dead Jackie in a lot of scenarios, but again, open maps counter her too much. But if you have a good synergy with Gray, on like uh, double switch for example or dueling beetles or just any type of scenario jackie can work off good but you need good teamwork to make it um work next up we have janet so i feel like she actually is a little bit underrated but at the same time i still think she lacks the damage i still think she gets overrun easily too easily but she can sometimes be a good late pick some places next up we have jesse so straight into the esther her hypercharge buff has just been way too good for her she's so good in hot zone so good in jam grab brawl good counter to a lot of meta brawlers like charlie and you can never go wrong with a jess so now we're going to be moving on to leon this one's really simple s tier still even though the recent nerfs is still too strong too good everywhere and it's just really hard to counter a good leon next up we have Luz. so Luz very he's fallen off a lot he's only good in hot zone and still in hot zone i feel like it takes him too long to get cycle for his supers too long to get to his hypercharge c tier is definitely fair for him so next up we have max so max is a fairly decent brawler in the right hands and the right synergy right comp can be good good in gem grab good in a lot of different scenarios but again it takes a good max to make it work so definitely beat it is fair there next up we have dynamite so honestly i think c tier might i mean uh, i don't know b tier is pretty good for him main reason being is because again there's just not a lot of good maps for him but on the right map and as a good late pick he's definitely very solid next up we have mortis so i think mortis belongs in the d tier i think unfortunately he has fallen off a lot he's only really good as a late pick to counter maybe like a sprout or a dynamite but they have to really mess up for you to get a good mortis game so for me way too easy to counter definitely belongs near the d tier c tier maximum but good mortis can actually carry and pop off next up we have mr p so mr p I don't know what it is about him. Again, he's just absolutely terrible. Only good as a like, counter pick. But at the same time, there's a lot of better counter pick brawlers out there. Next up, we have Nani. So I think Nani is like A tier. 
slash S tier. I think I, I think I've got to put it at the end of S tier. Main reason being is because Nani is normally like a more so counter pick against snipers. You can definitely counter Nani pretty well. But at the same time, when Nani has a good matchup and she has a lot of good matchups, especially in heist, gem grab in the open maps like Rustic Arcade, Knockout, Bouncy. There's a lot of scenarios. It's a sharpshooter meta, so of course, I've got to put Nani in the S tier. She one shots pretty much everyone. Next, we have Nita. So I'm going to put Nita in the C tier. So this, again, there's actually some good maps on Nita right now. There's like Double Swoosh, Center Stage, Pinball Dreams. But they're the only rip pit stop as well. So she's good on those maps, but she's uh, there's only a few good maps for her. So I think C tier is fair. Maybe bottom of B tier, but it's too many brawlers there. Next up, we have Otis. So again, I think Otis should be in the C tier. Oh, B tier. I don't really know. Um, I'm going to put him in the B tier, mainly because he's still a good brawler. Like, I think you can just play him in most scenarios i just don't think he's drafted too often there's just better options most of the time but he can be a good like synergy brother but i just don't see randoms going him too often but i think he's a little bit better than nita mainly because he's a bit more versatile more range next up we have pam so unfortunately i think pam should be belong in the c tier main reason being is because she's only good in hot zone and only good on the open hot zone map so what she's only good on dueling beetles and ring of fire everywhere else she's very lackluster she feeds a lot of supers i don't know i think a good pam player can make it work at the same time you know i just don't think she's the greatest next up we have penny so again she does have her moments she's a good counter pick brawler to brawlers like charlie she's decent late pick in hot zone and some bounty scenarios but i think it takes a lot for penny to work again it's not saying penny's unusable in the d tier it's just there's far better options out there in my opinion next up we have piper so straight into the s tier for me i think piper is a great brawl i think better than nanny main reason being is because piper the only brawlers that really counter piper are other long range brawlers like nanny angelo for example you know she can just convert her kit to counter so many different options you know she's really good in gem grab as a mid you can just never go wrong with going piper she can always carry next we have poco so poco's probably going to be in the c tier i feel like he is underrated and can work in a lot of good scenarios with his tune of thought gadget but recently got buffed but at the same time i think he can get countered too easily next we have el primo so again i think c tier probably is fair for him or b tier i don't know i think c tier top of c tier bottom of b tier is fair for him main reason being because he's only really picked as like a counter pick he's good in like pit stop or a counter pick in brawl but everywhere else i don't know his hypercharge probably is a little bit overrated unfortunately i did overrate that a bit next up we have rico so rico i think is so underrated i'm honestly gonna put him in the a tier again this might be biased but i think there's a lot of good situations for him pit stop brawl maps you know some uh, i don't know some gem grab maps as well he's got an excel uh, i don't know good rico can actually make a lot of difference next up we have uh rosa so rosa is kind of falling off a lot in the meta i don't really see her play too often so i think c slash b i don't know like she's i don't, just don't really see her she's a good late pick sometimes but she gets counted too easy so i'm gonna put her at like the top of c tier but definitely could make a case for a b tier next up roofs i think roofs definitely belongs in the b tier i think it's a good option good damage maybe a bit overrated by myself sometimes but there's a lot of good maps for him next sandy again i think sandy is a really good brawler ah uh, i kind of want to put sandy in the eight tier i'm gonna put it bottom of eight tier, mainly because i'm like double swoosh center stage he's so good like the best brawler there absolutely so i think for that reason i'm gonna put him a bit higher than i probably would like to but again you can't really go wrong with it next up we have shelly shelly is completely falling off in my opinion a good shelly can do some good work but at the same time i don't really see her drafted too often only really good in brawl ball for example so yeah that's what i'm gonna put her there you know lola always in a b tier always good in a lot of different scenarios but for the most part there's normally brawlers that are a bit better than her next up we have meg super easy i'm gonna put meg at the top of the a tier reason being is because she's so good at countering a lot of the meta snipers and a good meg can always make a good impact in knockout and bounty i think she could even be close to s bit s tier but that's probably a bit too much bias next we have spike so easily in the a tier for me if you play a lot of like ranked in legendary probably towards the s tier so good in every single scenario except for the open maps that's why i put him in a tier because snipers can't him too much but everyone else is pretty solid overall so just don't play him a knockout bounty and you should be pretty good to go next up this gonna be insanely insanely controversial but i've got to put sprout in the a tier main reason being because he's such an insane late pick insane late pick like as a sixth pick brawler you can literally win the game on your own with sprout with hype charge i know the hype charge isn't the best but still the movement speed and the extra damage and stuff that it gets it's going to help him out 
again, this is ranked. So when you're talking about draft, late pick, you always got to worry about. It. And Sprout just is that guy. Sprout is such a good late pick in every single scenario. Next, we have Squeak. So although he's a good late pick, I think he's completely fell off in this meta. So I feel like C tier is probably fair for him, mainly because there are some scenarios where he's a good counter pick. But more often than not, there's better brawlers out there and he's just completely fallen off from what he used to be. Next, we have Stu straight into the A tier. Super verse, so we never go wrong with Stu. A good Stu can just do a lot of work on the map. Probably put, put Stu more so towards there. You know, if we're kind of changing around things, probably would like change it around like this. But yeah, I think Stu, super verse, so we never go wrong with him. Surge, I'm going to put Surge into the B tier. I think if you're looking for a good carry pick, then Surge can be that brawler. He's good on like double swoosh, center stage, but I still think the map pool limits him too much and the modifiers don't really help him out. Sick Beats actually nerfs him, so yeah, I've got to put him there. Next up, Tara. I think Tara has completely fallen off as well. I think too many brawlers around her got damage buffs and she's just not being able to keep up, unfortunately, so I think she's fallen down the meta for sure. Only really good on double swoosh and maybe Ring of Fire. Can't really think of many other scenarios where she's good. Next up, we have Tick, so Tick can be good. I think he's a good safe pick. I'm going to put him at the bottom of B tier, mainly because he's not really a carry brawler. He's just like a good, like an okay brawler in bounty and knockout. Again, I think other brawlers outclass him, but I think B tier is fair. Like, he's not weak, but he's not strong either, so... I think Bomber beats it is fair for his ranked meta. Next up, we got Gus. So I'm going to put Gus at the top of D tier. Could easily be C tier for like a lot of people are underrating him. In the APAC region, a lot of people go Gus. I think he's still a good brawler because typically, you know, knockout bounty, if the opponents are clever, they'll ban all the meta snipers. So Gus can actually stand a chance. But at the same time, this is better brawlers than him. Next, we've got Sam. So again, I think Sam can be really good in the right hands. He's a lot better now since the recent buff. But at the same time, I think it, it takes really good Sam to make it work. So I've got to put him towards the C tier. Again, he does feed hypercharge too much. Next up, we have Buster. So I, I want to put Buster in the S tier. Mainly because, I, I don't know, like a good synergy composition with Buster, we'll just do wonders on the map. You know, you're thinking of, like, Knockout. You can use Buster right now. Hot Zone, Brawl He's such a pain to deal with with his super right now. So, I'm going to put him there. Next up, we got Chester. So, I know I'm going to be a little bit harsh, but F tier for him, mainly because I don't ever see him. Quickfire got removed, and there's just basically zero point using Chester. He's just terrible. So many better brawlers than him. Next up, we've got Gray. So, I think Gray has fallen down the rankings a bit. But I think 8 tier is pretty fair for him. Still good in knockout. Still good in hot zone. Good as a gem carrier sometimes in double swoosh. And just a good pick that people forget about. Okay, so now we're jumping into the final few brawlers on this list. And again, I'm sorry for rambling on too much. But I hope it's not too boring for you guys. But next we've got Mandy. So Mandy can be a pretty good brawler in the right hands. I think B tier is probably fair for her. I think she's really good in knockout. Bounty. Again, you've got to be a good Mandy. You've got to know how to hit your shots on your supers. But... I think she's solid, mainly because it's a very sharpshooter meta, so she's just better for that reason. I think without the map pool, she probably would be close to the C tier. Next up, we have RT. So I think RT is a good brawler. I think he's starting to fall down the rankings a bit. I think B tier is fair. I think barbed ammo probably makes him more of a higher B tier brawler. If we was to kind of decipher the rankings, I've not really put them in order except for the S tier. Uh, but yeah, if you was to... Um, you take bobbed ammo into consideration i think it'd be a little bit closer towards the a tier but again he's outclassed a little bit too much but maybe he's too forgotten he's still a fairly consistent brawler next up we got willow so i think towards the i don't know like the middle of c tier is probably fair for her main reason being i think she is a good option like i think she's insanely underrated i know i've said that about a few brawlers but you know she's a good option in some scenarios you know like split for example She's good at countering hypercharge brawlers. I think the right Willow, you know, pit stop as well. She's used quite often in competitive. So for that reason, you could actually put her in the B. Uh, yeah, I think bottom of the B tier is fair. I think people aren't going to agree with that, but she's used a lot in competitive. Next up, we have Hank. So I think Hank, unfortunately, is going to be an F tier brawler. I know a good Hank can do a lot on the map, but at the same time, far too easily countered. And ever since Big Friend got removed, I know there's less reasons to use Hank right now. But at the same time, the right matchup, it can work out. So, I don't know. If it's me playing Hank, S tier. But everyone else, I'm sorry. But the Milkman is just not it. Next, we have Maisie. So, I think Maisie has fell off dramatically. Like, D tier. 
honestly the fall off needs to be studied again there's going to be people in the comment sections that are going to be in denial but i'm not seeing Maisie anywhere she was drafted zero times in competitive she's not i've not seen a single Maisie in my ranks uh, maybe if i've seen a couple i've just destroyed them every single time the the, the supercharged nerf killed her literally killed her so dt i think is fair Next up, we have Cordelius. So, Cordelius is going to go straight up here. He's insane in this meta. So strong everywhere. Hypercharged. You guys know the business for Cordelius. He's absolutely cracked. Next up, we have Doug. Straight back into F tier for Wiener Boy. Unfortunately, I was kind of got some false hope with his buff. It's not really done too much. On to Pearl. So, I think the recent nerfs did hurt her a lot. I think she's still being underrated. People aren't playing her too much in ranks because for whatever reason people are just playing the more fun brawlers but if we're just thinking about how strong she is she's still really good she's still got some good capabilities still really good damage next up we got chuck so straight into the c tier he's insane in heist everywhere else he's pretty much unusable so easy to counter and he's just a super feeder everywhere outside of heist and still in heist he can counter him so I think CT is pretty fair. Next up, we have Charlie. So straight into the S tier for Charlie. She's absolutely insane. She, she can be played everywhere. Really versatile build. You can switch between star powers, gadgets. You know, you can even use her on the longest range maps in the game, like Hideout. She's insane. One of the best brawlers for sure. Next up, we have Miko. So I think Miko... I think if you didn't play him in ranked, he would be like a B tier brawler. But I think in ranked, he's A tier. So just like Sprout, he's a fantastic counter pick option, especially on like Bounty, Knockout. You think of like Minecraft Madness. There's a lot of maps where you can late pick a Miko and just counter the opposition, especially in a shop shooter meta. He, he's even better within ranked. Next up, we have Kit. So I think Kit has to go, I would say, at the top of D tier. So again, might be controversial, but Kit with the right composition can really work a knockout bounty mainly the those two game modes outside of that kit is useless but with the right synergy at the top level of the meta kit is actually pretty good because you can just synergize it with any sort of aggression and especially with a map with a lot of walls you know kit can do a lot of damage with that thrower capability next up we have larry and laurie so i'm gonna put larry and laurie at the end of s tier they're still really strong but not like broken they are good but there's not enough maps for them to dominate on, unfortunately. And a lot of times you can outdraft Larry and Laurie if you just pick another thrower. You know, like Sprout, for example. If they draft Larry and Laurie and knock out and bounty, you can just go Sprout, Tick, Grom, and you should be able to win the thrower battle. But normally Larry and Laurie are better on like scenarios like Split, Jewel and Beatles, you know, that kind of vibe. So they're still pretty solid overall. Next up, we have Angelo straight into the S tier, the best brawler in the game, best brawler in the ranks. Ban it every time if you don't get first pick. And yeah, everywhere else, you know, he's just absolutely insane. And then the same with Melody again. The two brawlers that are banned every single time in ranked is Angelo and it's Melody. You want to ban them every single time. They're far too good. So good in this game. Like they're good in every single scenario. Just ban them every time. They're insane everywhere. So that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know what you think of my ranking right there. Again, I feel like I put a lot of time into this. I played a lot of ranked. I might be a little bit harsh on some brawlers, but at the same time, this is just how much I'm seeing them in ranked, how much I'm feeling the modifiers affect them. But I think it's pretty generically good. You know, your S tier brawlers, you want to be picking, banning all of the time. Your A tier are going to be really good in like three, four game modes and super solid win rates. B tier, they're going to be brawlers that you can uh, comfortably play in a lot of different scenarios or they're really good in one modifier or map. And then C tier, good counter pick. D tier, hardly ever used and F tier, just never use them whatsoever. You're going to lose every single time. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.